Hello and welcome to the first lecture of Unit 7. Unit 7 is a little bit different than the other units because it doesn't really follow a specific chapter in the book. It's just following, breaking down the Constitution and trying to understand what makes the Constitution work. And to better understand how the Constitution works, we break it up into these seven principles. And we will be talking about three of these things today and then over the course of the unit we will cover the last four so the Constitution can be broken up into seven principles and or beliefs think of these seven principles as building blocks and when they work together they form the foundation of the United States government so principles are kind of like these things that you stand behind you your beliefs, your values, you um, it's what makes you up. It what it's what drives the decisions that you make. So the principles of the Constitution are what form the values, the basis of the Constitution and ultimately, you know, dis makes the decisions of the United States government. And the seven are listed here, and the three that pop up are the ones that we're talking about today. We will be talking about republicanism, which we have talked about before, you know, being a republic and representative government, separation of powers, limited government, popular sovereignty, federalism, checks and balances, and individual rights. Now, we have talked a lot about almost all of those things, so you really, in this unit, just need to be remembering back to when we talked about these things and you know getting more detailed in them the first one we talk about is popular sovereignty you have to understand what both of those words mean the first is popular and it means population or the public or people and sovereignty if you look in here you have the word reign as in to rule so sovereignty means the right to rule so if you put these together you have people and then right to rule and when the government practices popular sovereignty it would be a government in which the people have the right to rule so that's what popular sovereignty means we the people decide who our leaders are and that's how we have the power we have the power to choose who is in power or who is leading us. The principle of popular sovereignty means that the people of the United States are the source of the government's power because we put them in power. The government cannot do anything without the consent of the people. Without us choosing them, and without us putting them there to run the government and make the decisions, we, you know, they can't they can't do anything and if they make bad decisions they then can be removed this is where our right to vote comes from so popular sovereignty is also the principle in where we decide that people get to vote and have a say and that's how we voice our power the elected officials have to listen to people because the people have the power and the right to rule if you look at the kind of standard example that we have for a representative government where we have one class or every class sends one person up to the office to vote yes or no well if every if everybody in the class votes or wants to vote yes except maybe one for one person so the vast majority of people want to vote yes and w somebody in the classroom you know they say i, I want to be the representative i will go up and represent our class and vote yes and I'll represent you guys and you know that's what when we would vote for them because that's what they say that they're, they're going to do and that's our power that's how we voice our power we um, we vote and then that person does what you know we would want them to do so if they go up there and they vote no you know the next time around we're probably not going to reelect them we're not going to send them back up there to vote in the office because they did not represent us correctly the first time so that's where we have our power we vote for people to make our decisions and if we don't like them you know they can they can be kicked out we the people can kick the officials out of office 
The next thing is republicanism. The And we've talked a lot about this because the framers want the people to have a say in the government. So they had to figure out, you know, how do we get everybody to have a voice in the government? But we know that if everyone votes, it's going to be very hard to make any real solid decisions. It's going to take forever. Um, just imagine if every single person in the whole entire United States voted on every single little law issue, everything. So what they just decided to do is they chose a republic, like we've talked about before. And a republic is a government in, where, in which people elect representatives to govern them. The people have the power in the republic because they get to choose the representatives. They get to choose the person that is going to best represent them. These representatives then have to listen to what the majority of people say or want and vote on issues in that way because, like we said, um, if the person that we send up to the office doesn't represent us in the best way or vote on the issue that in the way that we want, they will probably not be reelected. If the people become unhappy with the decisions their leaders or representatives make, then they can be replaced at the next election. So if we're unhappy with the way that the person went up in the office and voted because they said they were going to vote yes and then they vote no and totally go against everybody's wishes in the classroom, we're not going to reelect them. They're going to get kicked out. The last thing, the last principle of the Constitution that we talk about today is limited government. The framers did their best to limit the power of the government, so we have looked at things that give power to the people. Make sure that people have a voice in voting and popular sovereignty and republicanism, and they want to make sure that the government is very um, checked and they doesn't doesn't have a whole bunch of powers and they can't take all the power away from the people. And if you look at the reasons for this, I mean, obviously they don't want their new country that they just formed to turn in to what they just broke away from, which is Britain, and have a king and tyranny and um, all this kind of stuff. Limited government also means rule of law, which means that the, the law applies to everyone, including those in power. So, you know, if you walk in to a gas station and you steal a whole bunch of candy bars and you walk out, the store owner is going to say, hey, you're stealing my candy bars. Please don't do that. I am going to call the police and you're going to get caught and you're going to get in trouble and, you know, you're going to face a consequence. If a member of the House of Representatives or a, a senator walks into a gas station and steals a whole bunch of candy bars, the store owner is going to go, hey, you're stealing my candy bars, uh, please don't do that, I'm going to call the cops. And they're going to face the same consequence that you would. The law applies in either situation. If you walk out onto your front lawn and some guy's just walking by, walking his dog, minding his own business, you walk out there and shoot him in the face, you're going to jail because you just murdered somebody. If the President of the United States walks out on the front lawn of the White House, walks all the way up to the fence on the other end, and some guy's just walking his dog, minding his own business, and the President of the United States shoots that guy in the face, the President of the United States is going to jail because he just murdered somebody. All right? It doesn't matter who you are. If you break the law, you, you're going to face the same consequences. The Tenth Amendment is the next way that the government is limited in the Constitution. It says that any power that is not given to the federal government by the Constitution is given to the state. So if it, if it doesn't say in the Constitution that this power is given to the national government, the national government can do this. If it's not listed in the Constitution, if it's not mentioned in the Constitution, it means that the states have control over it. So, for example, the you know there's no mention of speed limits on the interstates so if there's no mention of it in the constitution who's what group is responsible for regulating the speed limits and that would be the states because if you think about it the states get to decide what their speed limit is because you know here in missouri on the interstates it's like 70 miles an hour but when you go over to illinois it's 65 so it varies from state to state it's not like a national law the states decide how fast the speed limit on the interstates in their state should be the national government may only use those powers con the Constitution grants them. And to outline things that Congress cannot do, the framers of the Constitution put in Article 1, Section 9, which denies certain powers to the national government. So the next part of this is just kind of looking at what Article 1, Section 9 says and what it outlines.
The national government cannot take away habeas corpus, and habeas corpus is a legal order that is required to keep people in jail. So, basically, they cannot pick you up from your house and say, oh, you murdered this person in New York, and you're like, well, I was in um, Missouri, and I could not have done that. And they're like, well, we'll just see about that. We're just going to keep you in jail for six months until we figure out a way to charge you with this. Well, they can't do that. That's unconstitutional. They they have to they have to press charges against. They cannot just keep you in jail forever without any real reason. No illegal punishment. They cannot pass a bill of attainder, which is a law sentencing a person to jail without granting him or her a public trial. So you have to be put on trial before you can be put into jail. They cannot pass an ex post facto law. And if you think about this, post means after. And facto means the fact. So after the fact law. So what I would think about is it's basically it's basically a situation like if we had okay, let's say before the time where cell phones were just like everybody had a cell phone. And before that time there weren't like any rules that said, Oh, you can't use your cell phone in class or whatever. So let's just say that you know, people were just using their cell phones. The few people that had them, they were just out using their cell phones, texting in class or whatever. And that was like on a Monday. And then like on a Tuesday, the principals decide, well, this is a problem. And anybody that is using their cell phone in class has to serve three days ISS. And they say, oh, well, you were using it on Monday. So you were using your cell phone yesterday. So you have three days ISS. Well, that's not fair. It wasn't illegal on Monday. It's illegal on Tuesday, but it's not illegal on Monday. So they can't pass a law making illegal something that you did in the past. Like they can't say, oh, well, you use your cell phone on Monday. It's Tuesday now, and we just made this law, but we're still going to punish you, even though you didn't even know anything about it. So a law that is passed making illegal an action that occurred in the past. That is what they cannot do. They cannot pass a law making illegal an action that occurred in the past. They also cannot pass or tax um, anything that is exported between the states. All laws must be equal for all, all people, all states, everything. Public money, they can only coin or print money when the proper laws and rules are followed. And there are no titles of nobility. You cannot be born a senator. You are not born a president. You are not born the Duke of Washington. There are no earls of Washington. There are probably earls that live in Washington, like guys named Earl, but there are no earls of Washington. So you cannot have any title except those established by Congress, no king or queen. So that is Unit 7, Lecture 1. Um, we will be moving on to federalism in the next lecture.